The historic city of Haarlem is one of the most attractive destinations in the Netherlands. We'll take you on many walks through the quiet pedestrian lanes, but watch out for the bicycles. It seems like half the population rides bicycles, so there are plenty of these two-wheelers all over the place, but the historic center is a safe and quiet zone. Take a look at the map. I'll show you the main neighborhoods you want to have a look at when you're visiting Harlem. In the center, the Market Square with the great church towering over. And just below, there's a series of pedestrian lanes lined with shops and cafes that are very charming. And there's little side residential lanes here as well. Two main museums, the Franz Halls Collection and the Tyler Museum, the oldest history museum in the country. And there's a big canal that wraps around the whole city. You'll probably arriving by train, and it's an easy 10 minute walk from the station. And all along you will find a nice variety of shops every place you turn when you're in Harlem. Into the heart of town, which is a network of half a dozen pedestrian lanes, all of which lead to the center, the Market Square, with the big church towering over it all. It's one of the largest market squares in the Netherlands, and most days it's wide open with sidewalk restaurants. But on Saturday morning, there's a big open market with all sorts of cheese, vegetables, clothing, knickknacks, antiques for sale. That Saturday market is open from about 8 o'clock in the morning until after 4 p.m. So it's a big day. You can have a look at the market, go off to the shopping lanes, and come back to the market. There's so much to see that we have an entire separate movie later to present all about that market. We'll also take you inside the big church on the market square. It's called Grote Kerk and is one of the largest in the country and about four centuries old, built in the late Gothic style. As usual, the area around the outside of a big church is a very busy spot, the center of town. Lots of bicycles whizzing by. It's kind of a main bicycle lane right behind the church, connecting a couple of the major squares. It's fascinating to see how many people the family can put on a bicycle, and this one's packing an extra bike in the cart. Notice the baby hanging from dad, mom behind, and two in the cart. Five people on that bike. This neighborhood behind and just south of the church is really one of the most attractive parts of town. The way they've got those tables set up and the outdoor cafe ambiance and the pedestrian lane going right through the middle of it. It's even more interesting than the main market square on the other side of the church. This row of small buildings is actually attached to the outside of the church. Formerly, it was residences and some shops and workshops. Now there's a gelateria there. This was typical of the Dutch style of making full use of their churches, not just for religious purposes, but for the life of the society in general. Illustrated by this model on display inside the church, the ornately gabled structure of brick and stone next door was the meat market built in 1602, one of the finest Dutch Renaissance style buildings in the nation. This plaza behind the church we've been looking at is called the Old Green Market, circled here in yellow on the map. And now we're venturing into the network of small pedestrian lanes. This charming block is a fine example of living the good life outdoors in Harlem. We're here in late September, the weather is perfect. It's a very relaxed atmosphere with people enjoying drinks or a meal at the sidewalk restaurants and pedestrians strolling by. Many of these buildings date back 400 years to the 17th century when Harlem was at its peak of prosperity. They were homes and workshops and warehouses of the merchants. Today, there's a lot of bars and restaurants, and then it becomes a shopping street. And this leads us right into perhaps the most charming street in Harlem and maybe the cutest lane in the country. Kleine Houtstraat. Kleine Houtstraat. Yeah. Little House Street. Precies. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a small street with small privately owned boutiques mostly. So it's not like a big shopping street with, with big brands, but uh, well, more specialized, uh, specialized boutiques. Yeah. Unique. Unique, yeah. yeah. And, and the cafes. And the cafes, yeah. Same thing. <laughs> yeah, same thing, yeah. 
the bigger street in the center is uh, is for the for the bigger brands and the bigger stores. Uh, yeah, yeah, the wide street. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> What's the name of that street? The Grote Houtstraat. So little and and big. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's always encouraging to see locals out sharing the street with you. Gives you an indication you're on to something authentic. And you might have a quick chat. What's the name of the store? Attitude. Attitude. Clothing store. Yeah. Ladies clothing. Ladies clothing. Yeah. No surprise, you'll find lots of ladies' clothing along the Little House Street, and yet there's such unique shops, you'll find something different and unusual. They might be a little biased, but according to the Tourist Information Office, Haarlem is the best shopping city in the Netherlands. And if you want more details about these shops, go to the tourism website, where they list 640 shops in the center, with detailed info about each store listing address, websites, goods featured, and phone number contacts with a widely diverse range of shops. This retail zone of Kleine Hausstraat is only 400 meters long and yet it might take you a few hours to browse your way through it. When you reach the busy cross street, which used to be a canal now filled in as a busy traffic street, you don't need to go any further on Kleine Hausstraat. It's residential on the southern extension. So turn back into the pedestrian shopping zone for more fun. We're gonna show you now all the different shopping streets that you'd wanna walk down, and then we'll take you over to a quieter residential district on the west side of town. You won't get lost here because it's a small district and the streets are rather straight and run at right angles to each other, but there's plenty here to keep you busy for a full day just wandering around Walk along some of these connecting streets like Onigon. It's almost like a wide shopping mall that joins up three of the other main shopping streets. You'll find the shoppers and workers are friendly and ready to talk. Yes. How would you describe Harlem for the visitor? Well, Harlem is uh, like a village. Uh, it's a town, of course, uh, for 780 years. And it's not very crowded. Uh, you can walk on your own. In Amsterdam, when you come on the street, you are moved by the... <laughs> and, uh, here you walk alone. If you see Amsterdam and Harlem, um, Harlem is very quiet and Amsterdam is very crowded. Mm. But we have a lot of old things. We have the oldest museum, the Tyler Museum, on the Spine. Yeah. 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 And we have, of course, the Franz Health Museum mm. and nice buildings. We have the Great Market with the enormous church and a lot of things to see. A lot of people say, well, we uh, stay in Amsterdam, but for one day we came to Harlem and wow, what a beautiful city. Mm. Yeah. No cars. No. Oh. No garage. No. Just bicycles. Uh, and uh, that's uh, not a difficulty uh, to park your car. Yeah. It's not easy. But it's quiet. Those side lanes. Yeah. Are, yeah. Yeah. It's very quiet. Uh, and there's a lot of quiet places in in and around Harlem. I am born in Harlem, and I'm glad to live here. Now. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. The shop is called Camera Warehouse, and if you ever need any photo help or other kinds of information, stop in. Very friendly and just two blocks south of the Market Square, very central. No doubt you'll find yourself winding back to the Market Square several times as you walk around. All streets seem to lead there. And from the square, you can easily head on out to the big shopping street, Rottehausstraat. The lane with all the big famous chain stores and plenty of quirky little boutiques. You could easily visit Harlem as a day trip from Amsterdam, which is just 15 minutes away by train, with frequent train service every 10 minutes between the cities. However, if you come on a day trip, you're probably not going to be getting to the ends of some of the shopping lanes and into the interesting little back streets or to the museums. If you spend a night or two, you'll have plenty of time. Unlike Little House Street, the Big House Street does extend beyond the busy street here with a lot more shops all the way down to a canal. So keep on going and notice this interesting clock arch. It's undoubtedly the main shopping lane and you will notice some familiar stores. Just because the city is 800 years old and has many buildings dating to the 16th century, 
doesn't mean they have to be old-fashioned. Eventually, you'll get to the end at Costway's Fest, and now you'll find out where all the traffic's been hiding. There's busy bus lanes and cars going by, so watch it as you cross over. Take time out for a snack or lunch, as I did, at Blender, a very friendly and popular spot with great service and a lot of healthy, organic food. Across the street, you'll find the main canal of Harlem, which extends all the way around the old town in a big loop. Part of the waterway is the River Sparn, and the rest is a man-made canal. This typical bridge can be passed by most of the pleasure crafts, but some are a little too high, and so the bridge has to come up. It's a drawbridge. You find this all over the country. People on the roadway just wait their turn, and the bridge operator pushes a button. The bridge comes up, the boat goes through, the bridge goes back down again, and the traffic resumes. The canal has a variety of recreation users, including some stand-up paddleboarders gliding along quite serenely. Many Dutch towns have several canals running right through the middle of them, but in Harlem, the canal goes around the outside of the old town. Here, the city center is streets for bicycles and pedestrians. A delightful aspect of most Dutch towns is the corner bar, a place for the neighbors to get together and visitors and have a beer and conversation, maybe have dinner. This cat is on duty guarding the entrance to a residential compound where the public is welcome to have a look. One of the many traditional Dutch elements found here is the Hofje. This is a courtyard housing for senior citizens. And you find these kinds of institutions throughout the country. In Harlem, there are about 20 of these senior residential compounds, and they've got a history going back hundreds of years. This traditional form of senior housing got started back in the 14th century as a kind of charity that was funded by religious wealthy people who wanted to take care of the poor and also earn credits for themselves for getting into heaven. We'll see a couple more in a few minutes. Typical of the Dutch pattern, you have a lot of housing on these quiet little side streets that are mostly for pedestrians. Cars can come through occasionally for delivery or pickup, but otherwise it's for people and bicycles. A quiet neighborhood in the center of town. It's a very efficient use of land while creating dynamic neighborhood. You have shops, groceries, and entertainment nearby while living in peace. The name of the street is Breestraat. I like it because it's quiet. You can sit here. Yeah, I yeah. can have uh, my wine or something, and I watch the people. And uh, sometimes and you're the, three blocks away from the from the supermarket market. and the shops and everything. And my square. children, my children lives uh, ten minutes, five minutes from here. There uh, are many streets like this. There, are maybe one hundred streets <laughs> yes. like this. Yes. Yeah. All over Harlem. It's so well planned. It's the old it's style. It's nice. The old it's, plan. Yeah, this is the old situation. If you have this street, you see that one? That is the Lange Anestraat. Oh, okay. And that's uh, also uh, small. And, uh, and how many years you live here? 35 years. 35 years? In this house. In the same place. Yes, wow. in the so same you like place. It. You just so. get around by bicycle. Yes. You can come by car here, so. But the bike is faster, easier. If I go to my work with the bike, it's only one uh, stoplight. But if I go with the car, six. <laughs> so it's faster. So bike. it's faster by <laughs> my bicycle. Well, thank you very much for this information. Are you welcome. <laughs> the people here are friendly. <laughs> Oh, cheers. Cheers. Uh, Harlem actually is a really tiny, small village within a city. Uh, it's very hospitable here. Uh -huh. And you're now actually in the center of Harlem. It's a really village village. Like, I know most of the people that are living here because everybody knows each other. In the center. In the center, everybody. Yeah, like the Jordan. Jordan. It is, this is actually called the Jordan of Harlem. 
you're in the midst of it. And this is a Café de Vijfhoek, which is a bar that is filled with locals. So when you go in the center, uh, the center of Haarlem, you get a big market, you know that? Yeah, the gross a big market. place. Yeah. And this is really for the locals where we hang out. Uh, where you get Haarlem in New York. It's actually uh, deferred from Haarlem, this city. Yeah. It's double A. Ha so you, you've got, you've got you, Haarlem. Okay. Brooklyn is Brooklyn. Do you know Brooklyn? I, I lived in Brooklyn. You live in Brooklyn? In the Brooklyn. original name of Brooklyn is Brooklyn. Oh. It's a city in Holland, actually. And New York was New Amsterdam. These historic neighborhoods have been functioning very well for hundreds of years. Holland developed a relatively dense settlement pattern that produced these very pleasant neighborhoods. Because half this country was a big swamp. And so therefore the people clustered together in their little villages and they gradually drained out the marshes and created dry land. Another example of the traditional Hofke with its garden center and cluster of apartments around it, nicely protected by a wall, keep the tourists out. Some of them are open to the public, some not. A few modern apartments in the center keep that same pattern of a garden courtyard. This hawk here has a very inconspicuous entry. It looks like a private door, but it's open during the daytime to visitors. So step on in and you're welcome to have a look at the garden, but don't make any disturbing noises. Just outside this one is the lively Boltermark Square with a bunch of sidewalk cafes and outdoor bars. At the end of this, you'll find yet another of the pedestrian lanes of the city, Geerstraat, which changes names here to Koningstraat. And now we've shown you all of the major pedestrian lanes of Harlem. And so you can see this is a marvelous town to come and visit. For more than a day, it's worth a night or two. With a population just over 150,000, it's large enough to offer a lot of variety and attractions and it's got that great history. Parts of town are really buzzing with activity, people out on the street, while other parts are more laid back and yet it's small enough to create that cozy village feeling. People here seem to be in less of a rush than in the big cities and more likely to stop and have a chat. One of their most popular gathering spots is a former church that's been converted to a bar and an outdoor terrace cafe, Jopenkirk with a microbrewery inside carrying on a centuries old tradition when beer making was a large part of the Harlem economy. The bars of town function like communal living rooms where people gather at the end of the day, have a drink along with endless conversations. At the end, I remind you that Harlem is only 15 minutes away from Amsterdam by train and well worth a visit. There'll be many more episodes about the Netherlands and several more movies about Harlem. We'll take you into a couple of great museums, the Franz Halls and Tyler. And we'll take you to that big outdoor market filled with produce, cheese, clothing, and all sorts of great stuff. Stay tuned. Take a look at our YouTube channel and be sure to subscribe so you can be notified about our frequent uploads.